On Christmas Eve, Friday, December 24th, 2021, our most beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai surprised Supreme Master Television team members by sending delectable holiday treats, a reminder of her never-ending love. Touched by the kind gesture, they expressed their happy appreciation with some joyful greetings for Master. Thank you, Master. Merry vegan Christmas to Master and all. Thank you, Master, for the gifts. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you, Master. We love you. And a happy vegan new year. Cheers. Our Taiwanese or Formosan Association members also show their utmost respect and affection for Supreme Master Ching Hai with an inspiring poem written especially for her. Beloved Master, in the glory of December, awaken boundless love. From the Christmas songs, there is only love, universal love, great love, unconditional love. Like Polaris in the sky illuminates our way in and our way back home. The dulcet bell is ringing at the quiescent night, deep in our souls, are toward the supreme immense soundless sound, eternal love an ode of respect to our ultimate master. Christmas melodies and songs last forever. Long for our Heavenly Father at the sacred sanctuary. The whole world and stars enjoy the glory together. Love from all Formosan disciples. To mark the special celebration, Master kindly called some of the Supreme Master Television team members, sharing her thoughts and wisdom about Lord Jesus Christ's exceptional love and the world's current state. Hello, Master. Hello, Master. Hello, Master. How are you, Master? How are you, Master? Hello, hello, hello. Nice to hear that you are happy. You sound happy. Yes, <laughs> yes you are, Master. Master. Something going on, huh? You have yeah. spoiled us, Master. Behind my back, huh? <laughs> 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 oh, well, we try to be as happy as possible. Yes, yes Master. Yeah. We are. <laughs> oh, good, good. Uh, Master, we have a message for you. Yeah? Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas Master. Master. And a happy, and new, happy new, year. new Year. Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year to all who can. Enjoy, and uh, also to the patients in the hospitals, to the immigrant people who have not yet settled down anywhere or who are stranded somewhere, and to all the animal people, to all beings in the sea, in the air, and uh, patients in the ground, yeah. trees, plants, flowers. We also wish all the doctors and nurses and hospital personnel and all fields of uh, essential workers a better year ahead and some rest, some break, some relaxing time. May God bless all the good working people and may God bless our planet for a better future and bless all humans to be awakened to turn to a more benevolent way of life such as a vegan diet thank you God and all the angels who help us in any way I wish all of you and of course your brothers and sisters uh, all the initiates in the Kuan Yin Method and other religious uh, meditation practitioners, all good people. All of you try to have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in a world that we can hardly find much happiness anymore. Try to remember God and ask for blessing, for protection, and for happiness, contentment as much as possible. We can continue to pray for all of us on Earth as well as on other planets in the universe. May God
God, enlighten us, protect us, and forgive us all. I'm sorry I cannot be with you guys, but uh, my heart is with you. Yes, yes, yes master. master. And we feel it. So, even if we go through hardship and trials, we must continue for now. Yes, yes master. master. Yes. I hope you're still willing. Yes, yes, yes master. master. For the moment, our world is not any more hope than before. In fact, it's, it's less hope than before, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe people's hearts will change, and then God will be lenient, heaven will be merciful, and hell will shut down again instead of the world shutting down. Yes. The happiness and peace and contentment actually are in the hands of all humanity more than in the hand of other species. Humans have more power, more privilege, and more chance to make this world a paradise. This is a time for great change, and they should take this opportunity to leap, to leapfrog into a new dimension, new consciousness, new level of spiritual elevation. Many masters sacrifice in different ways. But Jesus' sacrifice is one of the greatest, the ultimate. And yet someone turned him around and slandered him for that. For the suffering he has to bear because of human sin. Yes. If you are not grateful, at least you have the heart to feel sorry for the person. Even if you don't believe that Jesus is the son of God or an enlightened master, at least you feel in your heart some sympathy, some love, some pity for such a sacrifice, for such a painful death on the cross which he has not earned, which he did not deserve, because he did not do anything wrong. Not to talk about that, he taught all the right thing. You understand me? Yes, yes master. master. So anybody who utters something such as what Francis has said that Jesus was the fellow and the fellow of the cross, he surely, no doubt, not a shadow of doubt, is a devil incarnate yes, master. or the devil's slave. We need to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ and his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure. The failure of the cross. Que anuncian que por las venas de Jesús corre sangre pagana. Y esto es la historia del fracaso de Dios. This here in this item is the history of God's failure. Es un via crucis. It's the way of the cross. Lost the mind. Has no IQ. No intelligence, no compassion, no love, no sympathy. Just pure evil. You hear me? Yes, yes, yes sir. I'm telling you this, also reminding all the people to look for that sign, then you know that he's a devil incarnate. I knew all that before I see all the, the research that you have done about many exorcisms or what other clairvoyant people see about him. Este es un Papa ilegítimo, ilegítimo porque fue nombrado no por el Espíritu Santo, sino por una mafia de cardenales. Mafia de cardenales es una expresión que yo no uso, la utilizó precisamente el jefe de la conspiración, el cardenal Daniels, el cardenal europeo, jefe de la conspiración, que dijo que una mafia de cardenales, muerto de risa, con desparpajo y con, des, y con descaro, él confesó que con maniobras politiqueras, prohibidas por la Iglesia, bajo pena de excomunión, esos cardenales eligieron a Francisco. Entonces, la, el origen de Francisco es un no origen ilegítimo. We have come to a point that even simple people with little knowledge of doctrinal issues understand that we have a non-Catholic Pope, at least in strict sense of the term. Anti-Catholic heresies.
in the Vatican Gardens where they had a, a female shaman and they brought in two of these statues and they had everyone bowing down to them while the Pope sat on the side. And the media all over the world and Catholics everywhere who watched the opening ceremony thought, this is very odd. It looks like idolatry. It looks like a golden calf situation. And then throughout the remaining two to three weeks, these idols were placed in St. Peter's, uh, by the altar of St. Peter's, and in a church called Santa Maria Traspotina, which is very near the Vatican. Anti-life. President Higgins has signed into law the murder of babies. And yet Francis is thanking God Almighty that Ireland has a wise man as its head with this man? It's almost like Francis does exactly the opposite of what you would expect the Vicar of Christ to do. The Pope literally honored an abortion activist with a pontifical medal of knighthood, no less. Check out what the article says here. Pope Francis conferred the title Commander of the Pontifical Equestrian Order of St. Gregory the Great on the Lillian Plowman, a Dutch politician and vocal agitator for abortion rights. Last year, Plowman founded a pro-abortion organization called She Decides, which offers funding and support for international NGOs that provide, facilitate, or campaign for abortion. On February 8, 2016, one of Italy's most prominent dailies, Corriera della Sera, published an interview with Pope Francis in which he praised Italy's leading abortion proponent, Emma Bonino, as one of the nation's forgotten greats. More than that, the Pope has met with Bonino on several occasions, and her close association with the Pope has even led her to speaking at several Catholic churches in Italy, all the while being the chief promoter of abortion in the country. And as a politician, she championed abortion, euthanasia, legalization of recreational drugs, graphic sex education, and more. I still respect the one who commits suicide. I place him in the merciful hands of God. Anti-marriage. On June 16th, 2016, Pope Francis said something to the priests of Rome, which went viral in the mainstream media. He seemed to promote cohabitation. And I know that sounds impossible, but here's the video of him saying it. Ma davvero, io ti dico, ho visto tanta fedeltà in queste convivenze, tanta fedeltà. E io sono sicuro che questo è un matrimonio vero, eh? hanno la grazia proprio del matrimonio per la fedeltà no? che hanno. Virtues. Yeah, 
copa de vino le va a soltar la lengua. <risa> anti-condemning sin. Francis, earlier this year, he drew widespread criticism, defending a Chilean bishop accused of covering up for that country's most notorious abuser priest. Vigano claims he informed the Pope himself of McCarrick's misdeeds, and the Pope ignored uh -huh. this and restored McCarrick. Dishonorable cardinals, whom Francis protected or elevated. Cardinal Domenico Calcagno protected Nello Giraudo, a priest who had abused a same-sex minor. Pope Francis retained him in office. Cardinal John Dew argued for the admission of adulterous couples to the Eucharist. Pope Francis named him a cardinal in 2015. Cardinal Joseph D. Kessel appointed Father Tom Flemis as a pastor after he had been convicted of sexual abuse. Pope Francis chose Bishop D. Kessel as Archbishop and named him a cardinal. Archbishop Mario Enrico Delpini moved Father Mauro Galli to a new parish after being informed that Galli had sexually abused a young man. Pope Francis named him as Archbishop of Milan in 2017. Cardinal Donald Wuerl allowed Father George Zerwis to continue in ministry after learning that he had committed numerous crimes of sexual abuse. Pope Francis praised him for his nobility, kept him in charge of the Archdiocese of Washington. Bishop Jose Tolentino claims that abortion is a right. Pope Francis made him an Archbishop and head of the Vatican secret archives in 2018. Bishop Gustavo Oscar Zingita engaged in homosexual misconduct, including the sexual harassment of seminarians. Pope Francis names Zingita as assessor of the administration of the patrimony of the Apostolic See. Monsignor Batista Mario Salvatore Rica was engaged in grave homosexual misbehavior, got trapped in an elevator with a male prostitute. Pope Francis put him in charge of his residence and named him as a prelate. Father Julio Corassi was convicted in 2009 of sexually abusing a teenage boy. Corassi stated that all through his legal process, Archbishop Belcolio had held his hand. Father Mauro Inzoli was condemned for sexual abuse to minors. Pope Francis changed his sentence into the much milder prescription to a retired life. Bishop Juan Barros Madrid covered up the grave sexual crimes of Father Fernando Caradima. Pope Francis appointed Barros Bishop of Osorno in 2015 etc. Father Karadima has been since uh, proven guilty by the Vatican of sexual abuses. He's here, still in the C9. They will stay as long as the Pope wants them there. Uh, thank you very much. Thank thank you. It seems then that only the Pope has the power to punish his cardinals. So why doesn't he take stronger action? Maybe because he too faced accusations in his homeland of Argentina long before his election. In the case of the sacerdotes pedophiles. Um, dice que eh, esto nunca pasa en mi uh, diócesis. <laughs> <en 2010. laughs> nunca que él quiera admitir. Es eh, una no. mentira. No. ¿Quién intentó a contactar uh, a Bergoglio? ¿Quién intentó? Sí. Todos. Yo, intenté. Todos. Yo sí. también. Todos, sí. Todos. ¿Todos? Sí, ¿Y, sí. ¿Y quién tuvo una respuesta? Nunca. Nadie. 
a todos los famosos eh, del mundo, Leonardo DiCaprio también fue a mostrarle el Oscar, a sí. todos, a todos les abre las puertas. Pero no, y a nosotros no nos mandan ni una tarjetita para decir no lo siento lo mucho. No espero nada, no le creo nada. Y, y sufrí mucho la decepción eh, y, y, me, y me dolió mucho que, que Bergoglio no haga nada. Y, y todo, la, todo el mundo a mí me decía que le escriba porque él me iba a contestar. Y, y sufrí, y sufrí, sufrí mucho. Y, y estoy muy decepcionada. En otro caso, concerning other victims, some believe he willfully tried to divert the course of justice. It's the Father Grassi case, the biggest pedophilia scandal in the Argentinian church. In 2009, he was sentenced to 15 years in prison, but the Argentinian church did all in its power to have him acquitted. This 2,800-page counter-inquiry is a confidential, internal, Argentinian church legal text. Inside, the children are accused of falsifications, lies, deceit, and invention. The conclusion is clear. The court's decision was wrong. Father Grassi had to be acquitted on appeal. This work was commissioned in 2010 by the Argentine Episcopal Conference and notably by its then president, Cardinal Bergoglio, now Pope Francis. Uh, en el caso Grassi, ha intentado influir la justicia argentina? No? Porque ha pedido este estudio en el caso Grassi. Papa Kiko. Para nada. According to the Vatican's own newspaper, L'Osservatore Romano, Pope Francis has placed a painting of a resurrected nude Jesus ministering to Judas, Christ's betrayer, behind the Pope's desk in his personal study in the Vatican, along with, by the way, a statue of Jesus carrying Judas as a lost sheep. That painting was inspired by one of Pope Francis's books, which suggested that Judas may not be in hell. It is not at all that surprising that he has such a fascination with Judas. You know, to many faithful Catholics, it seems like Pope Francis is betraying the mystical body of Christ in much the same way that Judas betrayed our Lord. One thing that calls our attention is that Jesus never calls him a betrayer. In fact, he calls him friend. Anti-Jesus. We need to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ. And his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure, the failure of the cross. If we want to know the love of God, we look at the crucifix. There we meet a man who is tortured, died, who is God, emptied of divinity, tarnished, who became sin. God in Christ took on our sins and he became the sinner for us. When we go to confession, for example, it isn't that we say our sin and God forgives us. No, not that. We look for Jesus Christ and say, this is your sin, and I will sin again. And Jesus likes that. Anti-God, anti-faith. I'm going to tell you something private. So, in the bolsillo, in my pocket, Llevo siempre dos cosas. I always carry two things. Un rosario. Rosary. Para rezar. To pray. Y una cosa que parece extraña. Something which seems odd. ¿Qué es esto? Y esto es la historia del fracaso de Dios. 
this here, in this item, is the history of God's failure. It's the way of the cross. It's the way of the cross. Gesù sa bene che con Satana non si può dialogare perché è tanto astuto. Antichrist. Symbolism plays a big part in uh, Roman Catholicism and so this is why a lot of people were shocked when they saw this strange and demonic image of Jesus Christ in the Vatican's audience hall. It's really hard to figure what's going on with this image. We know it's demonic just by looking at it. I mean, you, you can't get around that. And uh, I mean, there's another view of it there. There's Joseph Biden, Vice President, Roman Catholic Joseph Biden, speaking at this audience hall with this de demonic image. And I tried to get close as I could in some areas, and you just can't make it out. It's just like, like it looks like a bunch of disembodied demons. And then you have this, you know, oval-shaped window. This here is the audience hall. And right there is the roof, okay? And that roof is, uh, well, it's rather odd. It's, and there's, there's that eye. Well, okay, I, let the, I just let the cat out of the bag, but that's an eye right there. That's actually an eye of a serpent, if you look at the shape of the building. And a lot of people think, ah, oh, you're exaggerating. Well, let's go inside. There's the fangs. There's the head of the serpent. And there's his eyes. Worse yet, the place where the Pope stands when he speaks to the people is actually made to look like he's speaking from inside the serpent's mouth, fangs and all, yet he claims to be a Christian. Confusing, isn't it? This church, the Roman Catholic Church, is a devil-worshipping church. They're doing everything they can to destroy Christianity, and the unsuspecting, loyal Roman Catholics have no clue as to what's going on here. Jesuit extreme oath of induction. I do furthermore promise and declare that I will, when opportunity presents, make and wage relentless war secretly or openly against all heretics, Protestants and liberals, as I am directed to extirpate them from the face of the earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex or condition, and that I will hang, burn, waste, boil, flay, strangle and bury alive those infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs and wombs of the women, and crush their infants' heads against the walls in order to annihilate their inexecrable race. That when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poisoned cup, the strangulating cords, the steels of the poniard, or the leaden bullets, regardless of the honor, rank, dignity, or authority of the persons whatever may be their condition in life, either public or private, as I at any time may be directed to by any agent of the Pope or the superior of the Holy Father of the Society of Jesus. Prophecy by Archbishop George Brown, Ireland, 1551. But there is a new fraternity of late sprung up who call themselves Jesuits, which will deceive many who are much after the scribes and Pharisees manner among the Jews, they shall strive to abolish the truth, and shall come very near to do it. These shall spread over the whole world, shall be admitted into the councils of princes, winking at their sins. Prophecies about the Catholic Church. Rome will lose the faith and will become the seat of Antichrist. Message from Our Lady of La Salette. Blessed Virgin Mary. Vegetarian. Received on September 19th. 1846. The agents of 666 now are loosed in Rome and have entered into the highest places of the hierarchy. It will be bishop against bishop and cardinal against cardinal till all that remains will come forward out of the cleansing. Message from Lord Jesus Christ, vegetarian, received on July 25th, 1977. Every single solitary denomination on earth has stated that the Pope is either the beast, the Antichrist, the little horn, the man of sin, whatever. They're all saying it.
in my own name and that of the entire Catholic community. There seems to be something directly diabolical at work here. Indeed, Archbishop Vigano speaks about the direct work and presence of the demonic and all that is currently going on in the church, but he isn't alone at pointing a finger at the diabolical. For the past few decades, there has been much argument back and forth about, for example, Father Malachi Martin's declarations that satanic rituals were taking place here in Rome involving various members of the hierarchy. The controversial Roman exorcist Gabriel Amorth, who died two years ago, God rest his soul, warned publicly about the very real presence of the diabolical in Rome and the Vatican. Il demonio tenta tutti. Well, yes, the devil tempts everyone. And naturally, he tempts above all the religious leaders. So you shouldn't be surprised if the devil tempts those in the Vatican. That's his job. The situation in the church today is so severe that five cardinals and two of the most prominent bishops in the world have spoken about these as the end times. Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano, the former papal representative to the USA, who blew the whistle on Pope Francis's knowledge of the abuses of former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick, gave a summary of the papacy of Pope Francis that really must be heard. The tragic story of this failed pontificate advances with a pressing succession of twists and turns. Not a day passes from the most exalted throne, the Supreme Pontiff proceeds to dismantle the See of Peter, using and abusing its supreme authority, not to confess but to deny, not to confirm but to mislead, not to unite but to divide, not to build but to demolish. Material heresies, formal heresies, idolatry, superficiality of every kind, the Supreme Pontiff Bergoglio never ceases stubbornly to humiliate the highest authority of the Church. His actions seek to violate the sacred deposit of faith and to disfigure the Catholic face of the Bride of Christ by word and action, through duplicity and lies, through those theatrical gestures of his that flaunt spontaneity but are meticulously conceived and planned, and through which he exalts himself in a continuous narcissistic self-celebration while the figure of the Roman pontiff is humiliated and the sweet Christ on earth is obscured. For more than six years now, we have been poisoned by a false magisterium. With unprecedented acceleration, thanks to the subversive drive of this pontificate, supported by the powerful Jesuit apparatus, a deadly coup de grace is being delivered to the church. With Pope Bergoglio, as with all modernists, it is impossible to seek clarity. Since the distinctive mark of the modernist heresy is dissimulation, masters of error and experts in the art of deception, they strive to make what is ambiguous universally accepted presenting it from its harmless side, which will serve as a passport to introduce the toxic side that was initially kept hidden. And so the lie, obstinately and obsessively repeated, ends up becoming true and accepted by the majority. Clergy in my houses, where are your strange sheep? Can you not reprimand the evildoer? 
shall you consort with Satan, allowing all manner of foul conduct and abominations in my house? Cleanse your house now, pastor, for you are being judged. The Eternal Father looks into your heart. Your time grows short. All that is rotten will fall. Message from Lord Jesus Christ, Vegetarian, received on November 1st, 1975. Etc. He truly is a devil, working for Satan, to harm humankind any way he can, to mislead the faithful, so that they abandon Jesus, abandon his holy, merciful, righteous teaching. Many of the people at that time worshipped him, loved him, because of the real teaching that he imparted, not just by his word of good virtuous, wholesome teaching, but also by the inner power that awakened them, yes. gave them enlightenment. Only enlightened masters can command such love from the people. And even all these centuries, people still worship him, believe in him. His teaching, even though partially followed, it is so beneficial to the world. So no one with the foul mouth, eating blood and drinking alcohol, can open it and criticize Jesus like that. Even if he's not a devil, he will go to hell and forever, mark my word. He will never be allowed to be among humans again after he's finished with this physical evil mission of his. I'm not cursing or frightening anybody. It is true like that, logical. Yes, yes, yes. The law of the universe. He has not even love or sympathy for oh. men who die in such circumstances. Yeah. And if even say he's a pagan, no matter what, at the time of suffering on the cross, he even blessed the, the criminal next to him. See what I'm saying? Yes, yes, and forgive all the enemies that made him suffer in agony like that. Only a saint can do that. Yes, yes, so, no matter if you believe in him or not, you must know at least he's an exceptional being. He's an excellent human who has such a love, such a big heart. Yes, yes, a person who died in such agony like that. And still, some so-called his representative on earth opens his bloody mouth and dares say such thing. Not one time, but more than one time, in different ways, to blemish a loving, kind human like Jesus. Not to talk about if he's a saint or he's an enlightened master or whether or not he is the Son of God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, yes Master. master. So I hope that all the Catholic people understand this and judge for themselves and don't follow this evil. He has nothing in him but devil and low, low grade of existence, not just low life. So anybody who follows him will go to hell with him. That's what I'm worried about. So that's why I spare no no effort and means no word to keep telling people all this time, recently. Yes, yes, Master. I hope in the future everyone will know God, believe in God, believe in the righteousness and moral standards of at least the human world. And furthermore, if they want to be enlightened and be home forever, then they should get enlightenment, true enlightenment. The next day, on December 25, 2021, our most compassionate master called more Supreme Master Television team members to convey her wishes for the occasion. She elaborated further on Lord Jesus' sacrifice and those who felt to appreciate it, as well as spoke about the Omicron variant. Hey, hi. Merry Christmas, huh? Hi, Master. Hi, master. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year, in case you can. Yes, thank you, Master. master. Thank you for calling, Master. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, thank God, no? Yes, thank yes, God. Thank God. Thank God, and we thank Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 For His for His uh, glorious sacrifice. Even though it's so sad, so sad. 
but many master also suffer differently. Yes. yes. It's never good. It's never easy for any master to work in this world. But in Jesus' case, people record it somehow, and then at least humans glorify him. Yeah, still. Yes, yes master. Otherwise, many masters also die in silence. Oh. Yeah, in, in darkness, in obscurity, and not so gruesome. Oh, wow. That's obviously demonstrated the way Jesus died. I understand. Yes, Master. Not that Jesus wanted it that way, just he had to sacrifice. And for that, the world still is celebrating his birthday every year. Yes. 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 And that's the least they can do. Right. Better would be that they follow his teaching, the commandments of God, yeah? Yes, yes Master. And best is to get enlightened. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the way Jesus has imparted to his disciples. Enlightenment, that's what we need, not just outward ritual and worship and respect and celebration. Yes, Master. Just uh, sadly, our world is still not up to that standard. Maybe they will. Uh, One day, maybe all humans will wake up. The humans are the ones who destroy the planet, destroy their happiness. Yes. They just live a crazy life. Crazy life from hand to mouth. Don't even know when when disaster strikes on the pandemic even destroys them. Health officials around the world are really concerned that situations just like this could now be happening often and everywhere. The Omicron variant already taking hold in the U.S. and around the globe, prompting this stark warning from the World Health Organization. Omicron is spreading at a rate we have not seen with any previous variant. The WHO cautioning even if this variant is more mild than Delta or other previous strains, the sheer volume of cases could overwhelm health care systems. This Omicron is not the way it looks, okay? Mm. Not the way it seems. Mm. Oh, man. I really wish that the Omicron is just the way it is. Oh. You know, but it's not. Oh. I can't tell more, okay? I can't tell details. Oh. But it's not the way it is. I understand, Master. Oh, it's going to destroy humans. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. Mm. My God, I'm working so hard. Still cannot catch up. Oh, man, what a Christmas wish for me <laughs> to you. Sorry, my heart is just full of all this sorrow and pain. The world is so miserable. Yes, Master. So yes. miserable. Uh, they don't even tell me when this uh, pandemic will end. Oh. Yeah. Even if it will end, we don't even know. Oh. Uh, or even it won't help. I see, Master. Because Omicron, the symptoms on the outside, they look, in most cases, it looks like just a normal flu. Oh. Yeah. It's already spread very fast. Faster oh. than Delta. Delta was scary already. Wow. Wow. This one spreads even further, you know, faster. Just people don't see the danger of it yet. Understand. Wow. Yeah. That's dangerous. Oh, I am not allowed to say more. Understand. But I have tried my best. I'm still trying my best. But if it doesn't work as the way I want, then... Like Jesus say, let the dead bury the dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if we don't know God, we, if we're not connected with our original God's uh, power, then we're dead. Right, yes, yes. Just the physical, still there only. As I told the boys yesterday, like Francis in the Vatican even criticized Jesus like he's a failure, failure on the cross and all that. This is this is evil talk. Right. right. To slander Jesus like a failure like that is absolutely beyond stupidity and beyond spiritually ignorant. It's just like a doctor trying very hard to cure your infectious, dangerous disease, but because the, the disease is so heavy, so dangerous that the doctor also got infected and died. Yes, well, rescuing you, well, saving you. And then you get well and you turn around and you say the doctor is is a failure. Mm. 
That's very ungrateful. That's absolutely stupid and evil as well. Or if somebody tried to jump into the very turbulent sea to rescue someone, mm. and that someone pushed him near to the shore so he can swim back inside himself, and then the rescuer was exhausted mm. with the turbulent sea and the waves are so strong, then he drowned in the sea, rescuing that person. And that person turned around and said, oh, that swimmer, yeah. the one who rescued him is a fella. Yes, Master. Even the most stupid person on the planet mm. wouldn't see that as intelligent. Yeah? Right. It's the most stupid comment ever. Yeah? Yes, Master. And the most ungrateful, yeah, the most degrading comment. True. God loves us so much, has keep sending his son, his daughters to come down to help us, but the humans are just so deep in slumber still. Mm. It get better, it will get better after all the cleaning, but still mm. it's very painful to watch. Yes. yes. Very painful for me. Very painful. I try to shut it down. I, I don't want to think about it otherwise. I can't survive. Mm. With too much sorrow from humans and animals, people, I cannot survive. Too much sorrow, too much pain, too much stress. I would just collapse. Mm. Mm. I can only stand so much. Understand, Master. Too sensitive, and my heart is too, too weak. We have to continue praying and working. Yes, right. Master, we continue. Because just to sit there and cry it doesn't help anybody. Yes, Master. It does help, though, for me, yes. I use all kinds of means to clean the beads on this planet. Yeah? Oh, yes, Master. What I can. But still... I still need to work, right? Yes, yes, Master. Physically also, you know, right. for the for our Supreme Master TV. Yeah. Yes. Okay, my love. Uh, if we have a chance, we talk again, huh? Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Uh, okay. Thank you for taking your time to call us and talk a little yeah. bit. And we pray for God to protect you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Wish you a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. All the best. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Most merciful Master, our heartfelt gratefulness for showing and reminding us of the great love that humanity has been receiving and continues to receive from all enlightened Masters. We sincerely pray that all beings know God and live together in lasting peace and harmony as we rescue ourselves during this crucial time. May precious Master have tranquility and be always in the mighty protection of all glorious divinities. To learn what makes enlightened masters special, the true meaning of being pagan, and why Satan wants to spread more darkness, please tune in to Between Master and Disciples on Wednesday, January 26, 2022, for the full broadcast of these phone calls. <laughs>